So when it comes to filming fight scenes for movies, what if I told you that there are two more elements that were just as important, if not more important, than the martial arts ability of the actors themselves? We're going to get to that in just a second. So of course having martial arts ability is important for a fight scene in the film or a TV show or whatever it is, but it's not the only thing that makes it work when it comes to a visual medium. There's two other elements and we're going to talk about those now. Now we're going to draw on the experience that we had, uh, Mr. Zach and I, we actually worked on the project several years back. It was a short film project and just to keep it in a nutshell, we were trying a whole bunch of different filmmaking techniques, you know, different camera moves, different special effects, location shooting, wardrobe, props, and we wanted to insert a martial arts scene. So we do have a brief fight scene in the film. And I thought this would be a fun opportunity to just to talk about that as a little bit of a different topic and share what we learned, the difference of, you know, sparring or training in the classroom versus trying to make something look good for the cinema. And our film really didn't even have a story. It was just a little infiltration piece of a guy sneaking into an Air Force base and he got into a confrontation with another soldier and that was our fight scene. Now, the first major component when it comes to doing fight scenes is planning. You have to plan and you have to choreograph. And I'm sorry, but if there's any art that knows about choreography, but the truth of the matter is, you know, unless you're a Hollywood film who have massive budgets, those films will spend months with your actors on the map practicing and training and blocking out scenes and choreographing scenes, especially, you know, when you're talking about films that could cost a million dollars a day on set, they need to know what they're doing beforehand. But in this case, we had a very, very, very non-existent budget. It was just a fun project and we had a day and a half to film at this at an airport, local airport. And we knew that that was a very tight schedule to film our whole film, it's about a 10 minute movie. So we knew that we had to go bang, 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 bang. We had to keep a very tight agenda. And we did for the most part, even though the fight scene itself took a couple of hours to film. That was a good chunk of the day. So we knew going into this that we had to have that blocked out exactly, or at least pretty close to exactly how we wanted it. So of course we, we scouted the location ahead of time. We knew where we were gonna, look, where we were gonna shoot. And then we spent a, quite a bit of time back in the dojo, my instructor's dojo at the time. And we, we found two individuals who had some martial arts experience. So right off the bat, we didn't have to worry about teaching them basic moves. They already knew them. It was just about what we thought would look cool for the scene. And we walked through it. We had them walk through it. We let them sandbox a little bit. We got a rough idea down. And it got to the point where it was memorized. And we thought, now, okay, now that we've got it good on the mat, now we can take it out to the concrete and do it for real. And act, now that we know what we're going to do. And like I said, the fight scene lasts about a minute, but it took us a few hours to film it. And you know, we had to reset the camera, there's reflectors, there's lights, and we did record a little bit of audio, and we filmed it from multiple different angles. And one of the things, when it comes to shooting fight scenes in movies, what a lot of people don't realize is how exhaustive it can be. I mean, you're when you're watching the movie back, you got two characters that are fighting for a minute. Okay, they're fighting for a minute. Do you have any idea how many takes those actors have probably have to gone through to get that minute? a lot and that's one thing that a lot of new directors will do is when they're directing fight scenes is that they have the actors do the whole scene and they'll reset the camera film the whole scene again set up a close-up to the whole scene again the problem with that tactic is you are wearing your actors out even if they are professional athletes doing that for hours you're going to start to get a loss in the performance because it is exhausting work especially how they have to amp themselves up when the cameras are rolling so basically one of the main tricks uh, movies do is you film the whole thing in a wide shot so go through your whole choreograph sequence in a wide shot the whole thing's not gonna look pretty the, the, the angle's not flattering for every move but at least you have coverage and if you really have the time you know try maybe two or three wide shots at different angles and do the whole sequence that way and that way at least you have it in the can so you can always cut to that as needed. Then plan a bunch of close-ups and angle changes, but only film those sections. And this is where planning comes into play. Know the shots that you want to close up, pick your dramatic shots, pick your angles, and shoot those sections of close-ups. And take breaks. Breaks are important. Even if you've got a tight schedule, you have to let your actors recharge, or for, even for safety reasons. In our case, we were filming at an airport at the dead of summer, it was 95 degrees. And for anyone who knows Florida, 95 degrees in Florida with a lot of humidity feels like 110 and the air hugs you. It is uncomfortable. And we had to do this for hours. And at one point, you know, we ran through it so much, one of our actors did have to take a break. He was not feeling very well. So we definitely had to cool him off. Um, so whenever you're filming fight scenes, you gotta plan these things in. You, you can't expect your actors to go hours and hours and hours without stopping. So and in many cases, a lot of films will spend days on fight scenes if you have the luxury or the budget to do so. So, you know, they're not so quick to film as people um, anticipate them being. 
Now, when it comes to actually making contact, um, there's a lot of obvious tricks you can do with certain camera angles, especially like when you angle the camera and one person's in front of another one, you know, punches look like they connect a little bit better, kicks look like they connect a little bit better. And because the camera produces a flat image, especially if you use um, a little, any bit of a zoom, zooming will actually flatten your image a little bit more. It kind of compresses distance, so it, it can sell that effect a little bit better. Other tricks, um, you'll see these tricks all the time in movies, just those angle changes. Even in a movie like The Karate Kid, at the end, the crane kick, if you look very, very closely, you will see that uh, Daniel's foot does not actually make contact with Johnny's face. That they are slightly standing, I mean, they're standing very close together, but they're on a slightly different plane. It looks like, if you look at their back legs, that Daniel is maybe a few inches to maybe a foot further into the background than Johnny is. But you really can't tell by the camera placement, especially with that zoom, it looks like he's running into the kick, when actuality is Johnny, you know, here's the camera, here's Johnny, and here's Daniel's foot, like, right here. So he's, not a, he's on a separate plane. He doesn't actually make contact. So there's a lot of obvious tricks like that in terms of camera angles, and especially when you start adding sound effects. When it happens like this, and it's quick, and you're in the moment, it, it, the illusion sells itself if it's done properly, if it's planned out right, and if it's shot properly. The second thing that really makes a difference in movie fight scenes is the editing. So you've got your planning, and you have your editing. I think people greatly underestimate how important good editing is to sell an effective fight scene. The, the, the editors are some of the most underappreciated film um, staff in a lot of cases because the ones that are really good, you won't notice their work. So the best edit is the one that you don't see. So when it comes to fight scenes, there's a lot, a lot of little tiny tactics and tricks that can make a scene, that can make or break a scene. And we, we found it out with this film too, you know, even though we blocked out our shots. So if you look at our rehearsal footage, we knew exactly the moves that we wanted. We pretty much knew the camera moves that we wanted. And then we filmed it on set. It went pretty much according to plan. And then we did a rough cut. And we watched the rough cut back and we're like, ah, this is kind of slow. This is kind of dull and boring. Like this seemed a little bit more intense on set. But then of course that was just a rough cut. We went back and we trimmed it up. And there's a lot of little tricks you can do. For example, uh, switching angles more often kind of gives the illusion of more of a frantic action. Also, there's something called elliptical editing, where when you cut, you can kind of trim out like in between frames. So like, for example, you're gonna cut from one camera shot to another, you could take a few frames off the, the first action, a few frames off the last action, and when it splices together, it makes it look like a throw or a kick or a strike is a little bit faster than it actually was, just because you trim up the timing. We went in and we tightened up the frames. We chose some alternate shots. So for example, here, you can see that um, for the choke, our actor went for, he kind of loaded up first. So he loads up his arm and goes in for that choke. It looks kind of cool, but it did kind of slow down at least by a half beat for the, 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 the timing. So when we went back and recut, we just found a different angle. So we definitely saw that as a first result for the rough cut. We watched it like, ah, oh, wow, this seems kind of dull and it felt rehearsed. Whereas the second round, it felt a little bit better. It was tighter. We feel we got a better result out of it. And it could still use some more work, but there's a lot of little tips and tricks like that. And you just gotta understand that editing is a huge part of movie making, especially when it comes to fight scenes. It can make or break the scene. And a good example of this is the show Cobra Kai. When the show first started, you could tell that, especially within Ralph Macchio's case, that he wasn't, he's not a martial artist in real life. So, you know, they had to work with him and his fight scenes and his moves were extremely limited. But by the time they got to season five, they had much better editing. They had, you know, bigger budgets. They had stunt fighters on it. The actors were much more primed and, and, and conditioned for the work. So I want to point out in particular a scene in season two when Daniel and Johnny face off in Johnny's apartment. Um, it's a brief moment, but if you really look at what makes that scene work is purely the editing. The moves that they use are so basic. It's, in a, it's shot in a small space, and all you really catch are glimpses of Daniel and Johnny moving, but they intercut shots from the first movie for, for dramatic effect. But this cutting back and forth and cutting on action, and there's elliptical editing in there, made the fight scene a little bit more believable than it actually was. I guarantee you, had we just watched the whole scene play out in a wide shot, it would have been pretty boring, like most fight scenes would be. So that's a great example of how they were able to amp up the effect and the level of believability and dramatic investment of that fight scene just with a little bit of creative editing. And of course, there's a lot of other tricks that they use in Hollywood. You know, there's CGI, there's the advanced special effects. So you can take some actors and map the main actor's faces onto, you know, deep fakes. All sorts of tricks in the book. But there's a lot of rudimentary stuff that works just as well and sometimes better. And we just wanted to share our experience with you, just to show you a little bit of a glimpse into this project. Um, if you want to know more about this project, I am releasing the video right now on Patreon. You want to go there and check it out for our members. 
Um, it's a little bit more of a behind the scenes of what this project was, what our goals were for it, how much we got done, you know, what the future of it is in store for it, and a little bit more, a little bit more of a closer look. So if you want to go check that out, it's available now on our Patreon and on YouTube memberships. Now, if you really want to talk about what's involved in choreographing the fight scene, you're going to want to talk to Aaron Cohen. He was one of our guests and he was one of the tactical coordinators um, who helped train Keanu Reeves for John Wick 2. So you're going to want to really hear the story from the real John Wick himself and his fascinating background if you want to know more about movie fight choreography.